Fallen officers are honored today in Prince George's. Good evening, this is CTV News. I'm Rochelle Metzger. Thank you for joining us tonight. A new name has been added to the memorial wall at the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge in Upper Marlboro. Family, friends, and law enforcement officers gathered today to pay tribute to that fallen officer and 27 others who lost their lives in the line of duty. Denise Douglas is standing by with details. The law enforcement community came out today to honor and remember their own, those killed in the line of duty. You can see some folks still behind me from the ceremony. Let me show you over here. Adrian Morse's name is the latest one, the most recent added to the memorial wall. You may remember he was killed last year in a crash on I-95 while he and his partner were pursuing suspects. Now, there are a total of 27 names on the wall overall, dating back to 1937. In a solemn ceremony, their bravery was remembered and wreaths laid on their behalf. I spoke with Carmen Walker-Brown, who lost her husband in 2003, about how emotional this day is for her. It's difficult. Um, you know, we miss them. It doesn't matter whether it's been two years, 10, 15 or more, um, it's a life-altering experience. And uh, so, you know, we get through it. We rally around each other, the survivors do, and we get through it. This day is important for us as a, as a department, a local department, to come together. We've had 27 officers from Prince George County that have died in the line of service serving our county um, since um, since the police department started. So it's important for us to come together and celebrate their lives, um, to support their families. The chief also praised the hard work that officers do in the community every day and says that he tells them that in working hard, they continue to honor those who've lost their lives. I'm Denise Douglas, CTV News. And the memorial wall is located at 2905 Old Largo Road in Upper Marlboro. Well, last week we told you about two unauthorized speed cameras in Fairmont Heights that were ordered deactivated for operating illegally. Town officials reportedly never got permission from Prince George's County to operate the cameras on Addison Road at K Street and Balsam Tree Drive on Sheriff Road. Now one motorist says he was charged late fees on two separate tickets even after he paid the fines on time. I was surprised when I received a ticket in the mail that there was a speed camera there, no posting anything. I paid the ticket and I sent the ticket in the mail and I sent it in time for it to get um, there before the required due date. Later on, uh, I received the two, um, two $25 um, um, penalty notice and I checked my bank account and the, the uh, cashing of the check was was seemed like reasonable in a reasonable time where they, they received the, uh, the two um, payment in time. Ironically, Gilliard is a retired Prince George's employee who reviewed contracts submitted to the county. He says he assumed Fairmont Heights had filed the proper paperwork, but was puzzled by why the required signage wasn't posted as is required by law. Meantime, the town says it has turned off those speed cameras. The federal government releases data showing what hospitals charge Medicare patients and the costs vary widely. If you have a seizure in Maryland, your charges could range from just over $7,300 at Southern Maryland Hospital in Clinton to more than $16,400 at Johns Hopkins Hospital. One particular heart failure procedure could cost just over $5,100 at Fort Washington Hospital, nearly $7,300 at Prince George's Hospital Center, and more than $8,300 at Washington Adventist. Federal officials released the data for the first time in hopes of helping patients become better informed and to revive the debate about the price of hospital care. The Baltimore Sun reports that hospitals across the state could see more job cuts and fewer patient services in the near future. That's because the Health Services Cost Review Commission voted against increasing rates yesterday. The request came after a 2 percent cut in Medicare payments as part of the federal sequestration. According to the Maryland Hospital Association, more than 1,400 state jobs would be lost for every 1 percent drop in total revenue. 
Commissioners reportedly are more concerned about keeping Maryland's Medicare waiver, an agreement with the federal government that allows the state to set hospital rates under certain conditions. Well, should internet businesses be compelled to charge a sales tax on purchases just like their brick and mortar counterparts do? This week, the U.S. Senate voted 69 to 27 to pass the Marketplace Fairness Act. The legislation would grant states the authority to require internet and catalog retailers to collect sales tax at the time of transaction, regardless of whether the business has a physical location in the state where the purchase is made. Critics say the legislation is complicated and burdensome for online retailers, especially those in states without any sales tax. Supporters like Maryland Comptroller Peter Francho said it would help physical stores, which are currently at a competitive disadvantage. It's quite a sizable amount, about $175 million a year in revenue for the state. But that's not the reason we're pushing this. We're pushing this because these main streets in Maryland are, have tough times. It's been a slow economy, a lot of for rent signs, a lot of for lease signs, a lot of closed businesses. I mean, it's not easy out there. And so this is really doing them uh, doing right by them. The bill would apply only to online businesses that generate more than $1 million annually. The bill now goes to the House of Representatives for consideration. Prince George's police have identified 17-year-old Delonta Clark Jr. as the victim in yesterday's fatal Clinton car crash. The single vehicle accident happened in the 11,900 block of Brandywine Road. Police say the preliminary investigation shows the victim lost control of his car, left the roadway, and struck a tree. He was pronounced dead on the scene. Officials say weather does not appear to be a factor and that Clark was wearing a seatbelt. Anyone with information is asked to call the Collision Analysis Unit. That phone number is 301-731-4422.